This is Ford's first attempt at going fully electric in form of a Mustang Mark E. If this is a true Mustang car, that's a whole debate we can have in a different video another time. When this first launched, I was very excited to get in the car, check out that big display, all the tech inside and out as well. But before we get into it though, make sure you subscribe, smash that like button, share it as well, and make sure you hit that bell notification so you'll be one of the first people to know every time we upload a video on electrifying.com. <laughs> Okay, before we get in, I have a bone to pick with Ford. Look at this. What, what is this thing? In a world where Tesla's given us a key card to get in the car and you get some really fancy key fobs out there, I'm not sure what that is. But nonetheless, we still get some fancy ways to get in the car, like using your phone as a form of entry to the car. Uh, you can use keyless entry as well. And there's a button that you press to actually get inside of the car. What's also pretty cool is this key combination entry system as well. It's the first I believe that I've seen on any car anyway. So what that means is you tap it, it lights up, you put your key combination in and you can get in the car. Let's get in. Okay, so we're inside the car right now. Let's power it on so things are lighting up. You can see the animation as well. It looks really nice as you get in. And the first thing that you notice about this car, the interior is the space. It's You've got plenty of space to sit in the car and move around. You can even adjust the steering up and down. You can move it towards you, push it down, but nothing electrical. It's still quite old school in that sense. And then you've got random modern technology inside the car. Maybe not random, but they are intentional. What you have here is 10.2 inch display, which gives you all the vital information like speed, how many miles you got left on the range and if there's anything wrong with the car you can see all that important information right there whilst you're driving or when stationary and then we have the gear shift to road tree area here which is pretty cool actually because i quite like the groove on it as well just gives it sort of like a premium feel uh, for when you're using it and also when you don't want to look at it whilst you're turning it you can just feel for it and you know that you're actually turning the road through dial before we go to that big elephant in the room uh, let's look below here we have a wireless charging area which I have my device here, my iPhone 12 Pro. I can just place that on there and my smartphone will wirelessly charge, providing you've got a compatible smartphone. Below that, if you don't, you do have two USB ports, so a USB-C and a USB-A port. So there's also two of these at the back as well for the passengers, which I quite like because some people still have and use old USB cables. Not everyone's got the latest USB-C cable or the latest smartphone. Onto that big display though, this is a 15 and a half inch display and it's huge in portrait mode as well. Let me know in the comments below if you prefer portrait or horizontal. Let us know what you think. But here at the top, we have different sections and areas on here. But what I really like though is this button here, this rotary old school dial. And with this, I love how it just floats on the display itself. You can't really tell or discern where it actually connects to the rest of the display, which is pretty cool. I like that. Underneath that is your media control, so you can press that to power on your media. You can use it to turn the volume up and down as well. And then you can control the climate control area as well. So you've got heated seats in this car particularly. You've got steering heating as well, control the fan. And you can see how you can quickly just dial up and down and you can control it or just put in automatic mode and it does everything for you, which is pretty nice. Very intuitive, very responsive, and that's what you want. You don't want to be driving and tapping away and you can't actually do anything whilst you're driving. Although you should have been controlling this whilst you're driving. Elsewhere, we got up top, we have this button here with the dots on it and we've got the car logo. So it looks like a Mustang marquee. If we start with this one, we have some options available. So you have afternoon suggestions or if, in, if, if it's morning where you are, it will come up with morning suggestions as well. There's nothing populated on here. So I haven't had the car for that long enough for the car to learn about my lifestyle to be able to populate that with suggestions. This area here, you can see different things like radio, phone, navigation, all the apps that you can quickly select and you can carry on using uh, those functions there. One thing I want to point out here is Ford Pass. So providing that you've linked your phone with the car, Ford Pass gives you access on your smartphone so you can see things like charging stations around the area. So you can easily filter it down, for example, and you can check by availability, you can check the fast charge, uh, you can do the Ford Network one as well. And what you can also do as well is if you go into your account, you can top up your Ford credit on there uh, for payment. So you don't have to download numerous different applications to charge your car. Below that, you have some options available like radio, phone, navigation, tire pressure, uh, trips, and Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. 
This is compatible with Apple CarPlay wirelessly as well, so you don't have to plug it in. As the marquee is an electric car, one thing I really love that Ford has included as an app on here is actually seeing the detailed use of energy. So if we click trips here on the screen, you can see it says, where did my energy go? So it then breaks it down into climate use, route, accessories, and external temperature as well. And what you can see furthermore is your hours of my driving, so acceleration, deceleration, and speed. So when you see this, you can then adjust the way that you use your energy accordingly. So for example, if it's uh, climate use, you can turn on the heating in the car, so that way you're using less energy. You can see it over time as well, so that's this trip. You can see a previous trip on here, so you can see that we've got 16% climate use, 76% on the route, so actually driving, 4% accessories, so me charging my phone in the car, for example, and you see your hours of my driving as well, so speed, so if that's too much, it might be that I need to stop speeding as much and save energy that way. One thing to note as well is this line here, so you can just use that to drag the screen up and go back to the home screen, which is, again, very smooth. If we go to the car logo, you have two controls at the top, so you've got controls and settings. On the controls, you have drive modes, camera, parking, etc. On the drive modes, you have active, whisper, untamed, as demonstrated uh, by Tom in our marquee review. So you can check that out by clicking up here. In the meantime, what that does furthermore is next to it, if you press the information button, it tells you what each things are on this, which I quite like. So if you get confused about any language used on the infotainment system, you can, you can select that, it tells you exactly what it is. So active gives you a balanced drive, fun, engaging system. Uh, whisper, things are very calm, seamless driving. And then untamed is where you unleash the full horses in form of electricity, so it's exhilarating. What you can also do is one pair to drive, which I find useful, it just means you don't have to keep switching your foot between the brake and the accelerator uh, whenever you're driving. And then you've got this proportion sound, which is a synthetic sound for whichever drive mode you have. So if you put that on, it just means when you go into untamed mode, for example, when you put your foot down on the pedal, you can hear this sound that makes it sound like you're driving an uh, internal combustion engine car, which sounds a bit confusing. Do you want an electric car or do you want a loud car? You decide. On the camera, we can see the camera. That's very straightforward. Close that. We have parking as well. We go through parking, we've got parking pilot, access. This is where you can look at your unlocking charge cord, charge port lighting system and that kind of stuff. Open the boot, which is pretty cool. And then we go to driver assistance, which you can turn on your auto hold. As said before, press the information button, tells you exactly what that is, which is very useful. Traction control, go to additional settings. This is where you can see a lot of more information, a lot of more tools at your, at your disposal. So here you have uh, cruise control, Tap that to drag it down. So you've got normal cruise control, adaptive, intelligent cruise control. I normally have in adaptive cruise control mode because that way it can adjust the speed between myself and the car in front of me. I find that very useful while still remaining in control of my driving. And then you've got your speed limit assistance where you can change your speed limit warning, intelligent speed limiter. If you give the car to someone that's quite younger, you might want to limit that so they don't go too fast as well. You can use it for yourself. You've got lane keeping, you've got pre-collision assist, under pre-collision assist, you've got distance indication, automatic emergency braking, uh, excessive steering, so it kind of takes over for you. Again, tap that, tells you exactly what it is. And then you've got alert sensitivity as well, which I've set to normal. You've got rear camera de delay, I'd leave that as default. And then you've got BLIS. And what that exactly does is it alert alerts you of vehicles uh, entering your rear blind spot. Again, just for extra safety whilst you're driving. You've got wrong way alert, cross traffic alert, reverse brakes assist, driver alert, auto hold, traction control, and more. So there's a lot of controls there uh, that you can actually use whenever you need to do so. It's entirely up to you. If we go into settings, you then have sound settings right at the top where you can control where you want the sound to be like, how you want the sound to be like in the car, different sides of the car. So for example, here I can drag it to the driver's side, drive it to the guys at the back, or I can center it so it's well balanced inside of the car. In tone settings, this is where you can change the treble, mid-range and bass, all that stuff. So if you're really into your sound, you can you know, tweak that so it suits your music taste. Phone list, this is where you can add new devices to the car. Going on to charge, this will give you charging information. So at the moment we've got 94% battery left in the car and then charging schedule, departure and comfort, all that information, you can go in there and change those settings as well. Personal profile is very useful if you're sharing the car in a household with more than one person. So that way you can create your own profile. So when you get in the car, you can select your profile and all your settings are saved and there for you. And then we've got vehicle settings here. So again, 
You can change things like your alarm systems, the chimes, windows, how they operate, the wipers, as you can see there, courtesy wipe, rain sensing, all that information. So you can go through these and change those. But what I want to point out in this area is the door keypad code. So this is where you can change it, uh, but you'd need your factory, uh, factory code in order to change that. I can't change that because this is not my own personal car, but if it was, I'll be able to change that for entry into the vehicle. What's really cool about a door key code entry system is if a family member's arrived to my house or someone needs to move my car and I'm not there, they can simply, I can give them the code so that they can get in the car without me actually being there, which is kind of smart. Going into general settings, uh, we can change things like language, measurement units and stuff. Very straightforward. And then display, again, they've kind of come into the new age system where we have dark mode on our phones now. So you have dark mode on there, you can change the brightness. And if all this is too much in your face, you've got calm screen, which means everything just goes nice and minimal and simple. So you don't see all the icons and all that stuff on the screen. If we tap that, it brings us back to life again. Continuing on with the settings, we have your clock settings as well. So you can change it to 24 hour mode, uh, auto time update. Connectivity is where you can change things like your Bluetooth settings, Wi-Fi connectivity, and the uh, vehicle hotspot as well. And then your connected vehicle features. Uh, so again, if you're using your phone app to connect to the car, you can allow things that your phone will be able to connect it to as well. You can share vehicle location, vehicle data. This is in form of some sort of like privacy setting. So not everything is shared uh, in that sense, which is pretty cool that you have that control over your settings. Vehicle hotspots there, so you can use your car as a hotspot system. And then system updates, so the same way we get system updates uh, on our phones, on our laptops, you get system updates on here as well, which is pretty cool. And if we go further down, got mobile apps. So here you can change the way your phone interacts again with your system here. So this is rocking the latest Ford uh, Sync operating system here. So again, you can change those things. You got apps here, you can enable them, what they can actually do. And then we have departure and comfort. This is where you can change things like the car getting warm or cold or whatever you want it to do on schedule so going into the settings you can change it to when you know have it cool have it medium whatever you want it to do uh, for your departure settings you can do so lastly we have voice control so as well as being able to control the dials and buttons and various things in the car you can also use your voice to control some aspects of the car as well and what you need to do on here just like you do your alexa at home or google system at home you can listen out for wake words so here you can change the settings uh, so at the moment we've got OK Ford as our preferred option. So for example, we can do OK Ford, take me to the nearest charging station. Which item would you like? So as you can see there, return some results for the nearest charging stations. I can then select my preferred option and head there and charge my car. Take it back to the home screen. You then have this bottom area here, which I quite like as well. I can see where the thinking is going here. So like on your smartphone where you can see apps that are running in the background, so you can quickly go back to them. This will give you all the apps that are running in the background that you've recently selected. So you can quickly just go back to them and see what you're actually doing uh, there, which is pretty cool. One thing as well is on this main area here, which everything is displayed, there's also this button here, which makes it a tad bit bigger. So if you want to make this area bigger, you can tap that to make it bigger and then it shrinks those tiles so you can see more of the screen. So that's it for the Ford Mustang Marquee and all the technology inside and some outside as well. There's so much I love about the tech inside, like the big display, but as always, let us know what you think in the comments below. If there's anything I would love to change about it, maybe have YouTube app on there, Netflix for entertainment when I'm stationary and charging the car. Even that button to get in the car as well, maybe put a fingerprint sensor on there maybe, something like that. But absolutely that key fob needs to change uh, Ford. I hope you're listening. Uh, as always, if you want to see the full review of the Marquee, make sure you check out Tom's review as well. Fantastic. And uh, make sure you subscribe, smash the like button, share it and hit the bell notification as always. So, you know, every time we upload a new video up on electrifying.com. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.